It's time for Design Appeal. We're getting crafty. We're getting crafty with Tess Poe. She's the owner of Beehive Sewing in Northampton. We're doing DIY stocking stuffers. That's right. Uh, stocking stu stuffers are a great gift to give folks that um, you need something small, you want to just have a little token, but you don't want to go and get something from a dollar store, you know. So right? you can make a couple of gifts really quickly and easily, uh, all variations on a theme. That theme is straight lines. So easy. all the gifts that we have here are made with pieces of fabric that are easy to cut, easy to measure, a uh, couple of quick stitches, and you have some really nice stocking gifts. Let's go through real quickly at what we have on screen was the gift card holder that we're going to show you how to make in just a moment. Um, we've got a nice cuff bracelet over here. Again, variations on rectangles and squares. Can I try it on? Sure. While so you're chatting. This is the second time she's put it on. It looks fierce. <laughs> I really like it. It's fierce. It's pretty great. It's got snap closures on it, uh, so you learn how to use a snap setting tool if you need to, uh, interfacing, a couple other things. We've got some eye pillows or hot packs that people can put in the microwave or use when they're going to rest. What's um, inside of those? Because the, the outside is easy. It's a square stitch. What's they inside? smell nice. Inside is going to be a combination of some kind of a grain. We at BIV use rice, lavender, um, sometimes flax seeds, sometimes buckwheat. So any of those things are going to be nice. They'll have a nice weight to them. They'll be able to go into the microwave without fear of burning, etc. Can you put those in the freezer too? You can put them in the freezer. Those things are and so they're expensive. so cute. We, we are an athletic family that is often in need of ice packs and we keep them in the freezer. All it's right. great. Uh, a little key fob that we have, that's a great quick gift. You can buy those key rings in a pack of 10 and then use just a little bit of fabric, a little bit of interfacing and you have a nice little key fob. Pin cushion for someone who sews in your life. A tissue pack because of course everybody is getting the sniffles these days yep. and you don't want to carry around just a plastic old pack of tissues. And a guitar strap. That's a little bit longer. Still, it's a great big rectangle. For that sample, we've used the guitar strap hard hardware that came off of an existing guitar strap that was maybe a five or six dollar item, uh, but instead again of having black vinyl, customize it for someone who plays an instrument. That's a great gift. Uh, I think so. For someone that plays a guitar, and I like this cuff. Look, Look at that. That looks terrific with Pretty your outfit. Swanky. So let's show you how to make the gift card holder. Yes. Again, if you're going to be getting a, a gift card that's maybe a smaller denomination, nice way to step it up a little <laughs> with a little gift card and holder. Say, I care. I care to give you a ten dollar gift card <laughs> in a holder. In a holder. What? Because that's little, priceless. With an elastic closure. The nice thing about these is that they can double after the holidays for your driver's license credit card if you're just running out of the house and you don't want to bring a big purse. Like a mini wallet. Um, it's like a mini wallet, exactly. So three pieces of fabric. We have two pieces of fabric that are the same size, six and a half inches by four and a half inches. One piece of fabric that's just a little bit shorter, and I've already folded down the top edge so that we can do a nice uh, double fold hem on there. This is just a sample of some interfacing. I'm not using interfacing because the magic of TV, we don't need to really use the interfacing today, but if you're making this at home, I really recommend a little bit of a, a firmer, heavyweight interfacing, just to give it some, some more structure. Mm -hmm. And in layman's term, interfacing is the stuff that goes inside what you're sewing, right? Yes, interfacing comes in a lot of different types and styles and, and weights, but it's sort of like a papery substance. Many times it's fusible, which means it's kind of preloaded with a little bit of um, glue that's heat activated. Uh -huh. So you put it between your fabric, you put your iron on it, you press down and then it'll adhere to the fabric that it gives it that more structure cool. gives it some more structure so this is a pretty firm piece mm -hmm. again that's in the key fob as well so we're layering our pieces of fabric with our little pocket and I have some holiday fabric here that we've layered I've already gone ahead and made the little hem on here started to sew it up we're gonna finish it off and show you how we really quickly and simply can create something that folks will enjoy, hopefully use, after the holidays. I use that because I have a wallet that's got everything in it, but sometimes all I want is just, you know, my license and my credit card. Yeah, exactly. Right. And if you want to get really fancy, you can put a little piece of twill tape, which is what's on the key fob over there, and then you can make it a key ring credit card holder. Oh, multitasking. So, wow. So we've just gone ahead and sewn all three pieces together and flipped it inside out. What I'm going to do now is turn turn it so that our pocket is the wrong way so that we're going to do our one last closure seam. I only sewed around three sides so the whole bottom was open. So let's go ahead and finish off that last seam and we'll see how nice that looks with a closure on it. 
I like the straight line theme, though. Tess. Straight line. That's it. Straight lines I can do. Uh, straight yeah, lines exactly. you can do. You know, there is one. Um, you know, one consideration when you're doing smaller gifts like this. You know, you do want to be a bit more conscientious about your measuring and your cutting. And you know, if you've only got four inches to work with, you don't you don't want to make too many mistakes. No one's perfect, but you know, we do we do what we can. So we have this nice little pouch here, but again, with some interfacing, would have some structure. It's got a pocket on the front. The last thing we're going to do, and if I was being really conscientious, I would take a ruler and I would measure the center line of this little pouch. I'm just going to wing it here. We're going to do a nice stitch right. down the center. <laughs> and that's where you're going to fold it in half? That's where we're going to fold it in half. Again, the other thing we do to be a little bit fancier is we would do some stitching all around the edge, but... But that's purely decorative. That's purely decorative, but it really does look nice. I yeah. mean, it's, it's nice to have decoration. So we have our little gift card pouch with a little elastic closure. The elastic closure on here is going to be a hair elastic. So everyone has some hair elastics sitting around in a drawer. Mm -hmm. Slide that in between the pocket and the outer fabric and the inner fabric and you have a nice little hair elastic closure. Um, you could certainly do a button. You could also use a snap. Now, if we had some interfacing in here, this would be nice and stiff. You can go ahead and Just put like that, that gift yeah. card in there. Um, right, and yeah. We can check that out. Let's see if this works. <laughs> here we go. And we have a nice Northampton I, gift card in there. That's oh. one of those gift cards that works for 30 or 40 different Northampton stores. I didn't stores. know about that. And that's so cute. Here we go. Yeah. Very Tess, cool. what a great, these are great ideas and they're, I mean, well, you make it look simple, but it really is really simple to do. It is really simple to do. Machine. You want to just take a breath, take your time, measure, measure twice, cut once. And make um, a gift from the heart. Go slowly yeah. and make a gift from the heart, that's right. And now we have our stocking stuffers, but we need a stocking to stuff it. Right. That's to right. stuff, right? It's kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, we're twister. going to show you how to make your own with your family this year. Welcome back to Masterfield. Don't just hang the stockings by the chimney with care. Hang up the homemade, unique, one-of-a-kind stockings by the chimney. With care. Tess Fall is the owner of Beehive Sewing in Northampton. She's here to show you how to make a, your own stocking. That's right. So, very easy project again, and a lot of variations. You can take the simplest route, just a front and a back, no lining, no cuff, nothing, and that's great. Or you can get a little bit fancy and do some linings, some cuffs. You see in the shots on the front of the table, we have a couple of different styles that we've incorporated. I have to shout out to my mother-in-law Linda in North Carolina who sent up my husband's childhood stocking that she hand quilted and no hand cross stitched. Way. So that's definitely one of the, the uh, more challenging but more worthwhile kinds of heirloom things that you can make. Um, I want to show you the pattern that we're working with here. It's got two parts to it. You'll see again just brown paper. Uh, we've got two that we're going to cut for our front and back. If you want to do a lining, cut two more. What's the key? You have to make sure you've got one toe pointing in one direction and one going in the other direction. Because really? otherwise, if your fabric has a front and a back, like our fun <laughs> flannel that has polar bears on it, um, you don't want the back side of the fabric showing. Right. So you just want to be mindful of that. Um, the other piece of the stocking is going to be the cuff. And the notation that we have here says to cut on the fold. So we end up with one big, long rectangle. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put them both together. Pop quiz, why do you think the pattern is so big? So that we can get more presents. That's right. That's exactly right. Really? I was going to say you don't want to ma make it too big because then you have to buy a lot of stocking stuffers for whoever you're stuffing the stocking true. for. True. That's true. Big but, but if yeah, you make like your own stocking, you want to make it as, as big as possible. Like it's also size. a lot easier to sew it when but it's got a little bit more room. But small packages, right? Good so point. Many conflicted stories. Oh, good well, point. Hey, I like the size you picked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hand-drawn pattern. So what I've done is I have cut out four pieces of fabric, two for the outside, two for the lining. What you'll see here is that our outside fabric is going to be a red sateen, and the inside is going to be flannel. Why? It's so soft, people can't resist putting gifts in it. So oh, you want a nice soft idea. lining. Um, on our cuff, we've already cut this out. I've gone ahead and I've hemmed up the bottom with one of those fun snowflake stitches. We did that last time. We did here. use it on our napkins and our wine bags. but. I want you such to go ahead and just pin the top of that because while I finish sewing up this part of the stocking, pin you'll go it. ahead and pin that and then we'll flip our stocking inside out and get it all together. It's, uh, you know it's not going to be a good one when I can't open up the pin box. <laughs> and you want to no. be mindful of how you've layered your fabric just to make sure that you don't inadvertently put the lining facing the wrong direction or... Am I putting the pins in the right area? You want to put the pins going up and down just like this because we're going to stitch across right here. So that's just perfect. Okay. You always want your pins to go perpendicular to that stitching line that you're going to make. Oh. See? I didn't know that. 
I'm like Betsy Ross over here, sewing up a storm. You're not sewing yet, you're just pinning. No, that's true. Step one. I'm no Betsy Ross. Step right one now. is pinning. Pinning, you know, a lot of folks um, debate pinning or, you know, you get a little lazy. Yeah, there are things I don't pin, but really the most surefire way to make sure that your fabric is not going to slip and slide on you is to go ahead and pin it. So we have our cuff. We have our stocking. I'm going to ask Ashley to flip that inside out. I'm going to stitch the cuff and then we'll get that cuff on here. So you can stitch and then take out the pins. They don't get stuck in there. They don't. It's not a best practice to sew over your pins uh, because you can go ahead and break a needle. You can bend a pin. You want to be able to take them out as you're stitching. But if you're a beginner, what, might you allow it? We, hey, Tess, we this has okay. an A on it. it is that for awesome? That's your surprise. surprise. This is a surprise for Ashley. That is so cool. This so, is so cute. With something curvy, you really want to get in there and make sure that you've turned it fully so that you can really see the shape of that stocking. And you might have to use a pencil. You might want to use a chopstick or a knitting needle, something like that. Um, but you really want to make sure you can see the nice curves of that stocking. Tess, I love this. Well, that thank is you. Cool. All we did on there is take some quilt cotton in a really fun pattern. I cut out uh, the Ashley's A and placed it on there so it looks kind of like a stencil. I again used that fusible webbing, so a little different from interfacing, almost like a like a scotch tape in a way for fabric. Uh, pressed it on and then stitched all around it. So last step, let's just get your cuff on there. We'll flip it up and then we will have a stocking. You know what I have to do now? I have to make three more for my family to match my stocking. That's true. So I guess I'm that gonna have to is ask a Santa brilliant idea. I love machine. it. I love it. I hope. So you're just kind of putting it over like a sock. That's right. There we go. And Look then this, we'll flip it up, and then we'll go ahead and we'll turn it down. One thing that a lot of folks like to do is put a little hang tag of some kind if they're mm -hmm. going to hang it on a hook. You don't need to do that, but you know, it certainly makes it a little bit easier when you're decorating. You just, again, want to be mindful that you're putting it on the outside of the stocking, not on the part where it curves inward. Um, this is always one of the hardest parts of sewing for me, So I tried to hem pants once. How do you sew a circle? You just have to zhuzh it, Seth. Oh. You have to kind of zhuzh it, you know? You don't, you're not zhuzhing. I never That's zhuzh. That's the problem. Zhuzh, and I, I don't really I'm know. I'm free. No, real, in truth, what I really say is you want to keep an active hand, but you really want to let the machine do its job and you do your job. So you know what direction your fabric needs to go in, and you just want to make sure that you're not fighting with the machine, you're not fighting with the fabric, and you'll have a much more successful, a much more successful experience. Look at that. So, one rectangle. One little sock like thing, and That's we have so cute. Look at that. And it's big enough to hold all the gifts people are going to want to make. Lots of presents you. can go in there. Oh my yeah. goodness, Tess. Can I have a hug? Uh, of course, can I you can have, have a hug. hug. Happy oh, holidays. Happy holidays. Have their oh, <laughs> and so I, told, I told Seth earlier that I did not make him a stocking, and the only reason is because your name starts with an S. It's too curvy. And it's too I curvy. You just didn't like me. <laughs> if That's your name were Todd, I would have not like you. <laughs> if only. If only. If only. If only. Maybe I'll Thank you, Tess. Happy of holidays. Course. Happy this holidays. Is such a, a Happy nice stocking yeah. making. <laughs> yeah. And now you have to make three more. Now you have to make three more. You don't have to go overboard. You don't need lining. You don't even need a, a cuff on top. You can just go ahead with your nice little stocking. Love Thanks, it. Tess. Hey. Hey.